something we haven't done in a while. LSU Odyssey Oddcast. What's up, everybody? We are on the cusp. We are on, seriously on the cusp. I think the Joe Burrow Day, nine days away from the season opening. I could be wrong on that, but I think it's nine, maybe ten, something like that. Getting so close, you can feel it. We're going to be watching other teams play a lot before us, okay? You're going to get quite a feel for how this college football season is going to go, and definitely check out the LSU 2022 season preview there on lsuodyssey.com. We just published it. Last word on college football, even wanted that preview on their site as well. Because this, the, the preview does a, does a job of trying to get everything together, all the thoughts, all the possibilities, all the angles in one place. And there's far more information, far more um, pieces to it that, of course, the editing process removes with uh, these, these uh, bigger sites that you know you can only find on lsuodyssey.com, which makes this season preview uh, very, very intriguing. We talk about you know the high stakes here, the big players. We talk about everything for Brian Kelly and LSU, and the fact that maybe LSU are unranked, not just because you know they had bad seasons, but maybe it's because they're a little bit they're kind of feared. I feel like there's some fear amongst LSU uh, haters out there. So whenever I hear an analyst really rag on LSU and doesn't really ever, you know, even acknowledge their large talent pool, anything that makes me feel like, okay, they're an unbiased source of information here, I start to notice that they really are a little afraid of what Brian Kelly and LSU could become within the SEC. Of course, you know, they're going to more challenge the fact that this is a man who hasn't coached in the SEC before. This is a man who has never coached outside the Midwest before. You know, recruiting pedigree, all that stuff that people always question with Brian Kelly. But, you know, when you look at what Brian Kelly has done since he's been at LSU, I think he's answered all of those questions, don't you? I mean, the only question that remains, he, he's brought the structure, he's brought the control, He's brought the, the culture back. He's brought the pride in the program back. He's, uh, he's had the players you know, working in the community, caring about Louisiana. He's absolutely had a historic July and August in recruiting. LSU had a you know mid-40s, late-30s ranked class, and they instantly went into the top five. That's you don't do that if you're if you're a poor recruiter as a head coach. I'm gonna just tell you that. Brian Kelly is the closer in the recruiting process. <clears throat> so there is that. But the one question that remains can LSU can you know can Brian Kelly and his staff develop this LSU team, you know, half basically of returners, half, you know, starters, probably going to be transfer guys, can they deliver a competitive, in-your-face LSU program in year one? And how deep can they go, if, if so? You know, many people are predicting 7-5 and five for LSU. I'm seeing 7-5 and five as a prediction across the board almost, universally for LSU. Do you think this team's going to win seven games, lose five with that schedule? Well, okay, if you believe that, then you have to believe that Tennessee is a really good team. You know, you have to believe that Texas A&M is capable of beating LSU, which they haven't really been the last little while here. Yes, there's the pandemic win. Yes, there's the 74-72 to 72 game, but... Think of, think of LSU winning the game that they did and how they did last year 
They should never. If A and M really had a had a you know step on LSU in the rivalry, A and M never lose that game. Especially the way that their running running game was absolutely shut down. But with Max Johnson now, Jake Johnson, both LSU you know signed with LSU suddenly decommit, go to uh, you know rivals Texas A and M with Jimbo Fisher. Mostly to go with Jimbo Fisher, not really to dig at LSU. They had, you know, they still have good ties with LSU, and I actually still have a good relationship with them. Great family, and rooting for them. Really, I have I have no ill will towards the Johnson family. I want to see the Johnson brothers succeed at A and M. Do I want to see them succeed at, uh, against us? Hell no. Of course, I'm an LSU fan, but I want to see those kids succeed. Definitely. But when you look across the SEC and you see a lot of the, you know, Arkansas, is Arkansas really going to be a better team than LSU this year? Are they more talented than LSU? Are they deeper than LSU? Probably they're, they're probably deeper than LSU. At the same time, can you, can you really argue that they're a more talented team, have a higher ceiling than LSU, even with the ranking? <clears throat> that to me... I feel like LSU are being vastly underrated. This is not me being sunshine pumper homer. Just think about it, though. Look at that wide receiving core. Look at that defensive line. And you saw the post that I I put up the other day on Twitter comparing LSU's returning numbers at receiver to Ohio State's returning numbers at receiver. How in God's name is is Ohio State's receiving core considered to be the end-all, be-all of receiving rooms? Marvin Harrison Jr. had one game last year where he was big. One game. We had Malik Neighbors. Okay, so Jack Besh leading the team in receptions as a freshman. You know, like Jare Jenkins as a veteran and that's that's just besides Kayshawn Booty. And then we got Kyron Lacey. The the names go on and on and on. Chris Hilton Jr., Brian Thomas Jr. Like, you can't even compare these receiving cores. I mean, Ohio State's is talented, and they're sure surely gonna have far more production than they did last year, but out of the gates to to say that Ohio State is a better receiving core than LSU is just flat out wrong. It's pretty much Jackson, Smith, and Jigba and a bunch of other guys who really haven't proven. Igbuka, Marvin Harrison Jr. Sure, they'll probably be good. I'm just saying, like, out of the gates, really? You're going to underrate LSU like that? So check out the season preview because it's really got a lot of a lot of questions and a lot of answers to it and a lot of information to it that I really think as an LSU fan... It's very it's a definitive read before the season. Thank you very much everybody and thank you so much for your support everybody. It's football season baby.